We all have secrets. Do you have something deep inside you that you're afraid to share with people? Something that holds you captive and steals away your precious time? Hello, my name is Terry Johnston, and I'm a certified in keeping being HIV positive a secret. I wore it like a badge, and no matter how I tried, it would never allow me to take it off my uniform. I'm going to talk about living with a secret. I kept my HIV status from friends, families, and loved ones. I was left alone, defeated, and now dirty. I was smarter than this. Over and over, I was smarter than this. I mean, I'm a child of the 90s, and TLC wore condoms on their clothing. <laughs> I knew better. So let's begin. You paid good money to hear my story. <laughs> I let my secret define me. For four years of my life, I lived with it. I did not have the ability to move forward, and I lived every day with the constant reminder of my mistake. HIV was not just my secret, it was my prison. I made it a self-made prison, a place where I would no longer fully get close to the people around me, and I made the choice to live a lifestyle where I did not want to go anymore. Not only that, I live a very public lifestyle. I'm constantly thrown into events, places, and all the places even everyone wants to go. That was my life. And for four years, I had to wear a smile. And I wore a smile every day. However, once I got home, it slingshotted around. My smile was replaced with intense anger and shame. Home was no longer the safe place for me. Home became a place where I had to face my mistake and I faced it alone. I will never forget that day as if it was yesterday, December 18th, 2009. This day became my new birthday. There was no celebration for me. There was no pink sparkling on a cake for me. It was a new day that I would never forget. I let that secret take over me. I always thought about it from the time I woke up to the time I went to bed. There was no alarm clock for it, and it was my punishment. It never went away. It was all I thought about every day. I did once try to break from my silence, and I once attempted to reach out to some close friends, but my damage with HIV ran too deep, along with my ability to cope with my struggles. This also contributed to those friends no longer being my friends today. I lost the people who I confided in. Once again, I was on this alone. My secret also came with a great price, a price that launched me into the Lone Ranger status. HIV was my tanto, and the day after I found I was HIV positive, I was rushed to the human, or sorry, the health department to be registered as a lethal weapon. I was told that if I had undeclosed sex or relations with another one, that they would throw me in prison. I was read the riot act, and at one point, I was forced to write the names, the numbers, the emails, and every screen name I could remember of everyone who I had sexual activity with for the past two to three years. I was not offered a hug or a bandage for my wound. I was offered far worse. I left that office that day knowing that I was a walking death sentence. Not only was I a lethal weapon, but who would ever want to be with me? Imagine having to tell a person who you think you can love that you have HIV. This is where life gets real for me. You have to tell them far in advance 
before any love connection can even happen. You cannot have closeness without disclosure. This is the law. I've had many dates canceled. I have been left at a restaurant waiting for my Prince Charming to return from the bathroom. I was even told how dare I waste someone's time. It's worse though, and this is where it gets real. Imagine being filled in a room full of gay men. Now mind you, gay marriage is now legal, and you're gonna have to get used to big rooms full of gay men. <laughs> now imagine that room filled with gay men and those men have forgotten the days of the AIDS quilt. Those same men have forgotten what the red ribbon stands for. They have forgotten everyone that has passed before them. And they have replaced that with a blanket of shame and ridicule. I witnessed them talk about all the dirty men in town. And then I also heard them follow that with laughter. I heard compassion replaced with shameful laughs and cut downs. Imagine hearing this. This was my reality, and these were also my peers and my community. This is the norm. Who would want to work with me? A simple, are you going to be able to work today? Why are you coughing? Do you feel good? When people have headaches, they have to go to work. People work with sinus infections, but for some reason, people, I guess, can't work when they're HIV positive. I've seen this played out in a lot of offices around me, and in fact, one healthcare professional also told me early on that they thought it was best for me if I kept this a secret and did not tell anyone in Grand Rapids about my status. So what did I do? I never stopped working. I worked from when the sun came up to the sun came down. I never stopped working. And while my business springboarded and launched, I never stopped working. Work became my time where I imagined myself disease-free and clean. But the secret was having a toll on me, and it was a lot for me to carry. This secret and my fears and a lack of trust in the people around me stole precious opportunity and time from me. My regrets forced me to stay both physically and emotionally quiet. I was basically holding myself hostage. So what is my failure? It's funny. My failure is not my being HIV positive. My failure is that I wouldn't ask for help. I never confided in family. I never confided in friends that would listen, and I did it all alone. Keeping a secret is the worst thing we can do in moments when you need support. We all have secrets. What is yours? <laughs>